Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. When we talk about climate change, we often talk about big things, big changes in the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, gigantic hurricanes and forest fires and things like that. But let's for once talk about something very small, and that is the monarch butterfly. Now, if you are in California as we are here, you might have noticed something a little bit weird about the monarch butterflies, and that is that there aren't any. And it's odd because at one point, there was a lot actually. In the 1980s, between 10 million and 4.5 million monarchs spent their winter in California every single year. The last count, conducted annually by volunteers each November, showed that in 2018, there may be as few as 30,000 across the state, a number that's 87% lower than just the year before. And overall, we've lost 97% of the monarch butterflies in just a couple of decades. And it's the sort of thing that if you were not some sort of butterfly aficionado, you might not have noticed, because it's hard for humans to notice things when they're not there. But that is absolutely massive. A huge change over the course of less than one lifetime, just a couple of decades, we've lost almost every single one of this species that we just took for granted for a long time. And uh, that is not some accident. There's a couple of different ways that, uh, that people in America have caused that, uh, and let's break them down. But, but first, a volunteer guide who works in the areas where they count uh, these butterflies, uh, Anthony Gutierrez says, it's a sad reality of climate change. For every little thing that changes, there's not just one consequence, it's a whole chain reaction. And that is the thing about biology, is that you can't, it's like when making manipulations to human genes, you can't get one little change. A lot of little things change as well, and sometimes cascade into massive things. Um, but here's the situation with the butterflies. For years, western monarchs have faced habitat loss in both the places they breed and where they spend their winters, increased use of pesticides, and as well, deadly stressors like severe weather and drought. And that is a problem in a lot of different places in America, but especially in California, where we've had years and years of drought ever worsening. It's one of the reasons that we have the forest fires that we do recently. And that is not just a problem for trees and the setting on fire of those trees, it's a problem for the, the, the animals that live out there in the wilderness. Okay, so if the drought kills something that the butterflies need to survive, then that might take a little bit for us to actually notice. And it might be a while before so many are dead that it turns up in these yearly uh, reviews that they do, but it is absolutely massive. And here's the thing, <clears throat> scientifically, when it comes to climate change, I've done a lot of reading, but I am far from a butterfly expert. I can't tell you at this point what long-term effect there will be for other animals or for nature if we lose all of our butterflies. But I have to imagine that it's probably not a good thing. And when you put it in the context of the other animals and insects that we've lost recently, I certainly think that there is reason to worry. This is something that we talked about earlier this year, but researchers in Germany found flying insect populations there had decreased by up to 82% over the last three decades. A collection of separate studies showed that the populations of most of the insect species included had been nearly cut in half. And you might recall, if you've been watching the show for a while, something like six weeks ago, we talked about a study of worldwide animal populations. So not just the insects, but the bigger animals as well. And in many parts of the world, their numbers had been cut down by 40, 50, 60, or even more percent. So what ends up happening? If we lose the butterflies, okay, is it just sad because we don't get to take pictures of them or you, know, you don't get to walk around in a, in, a, in a dewy field and think, my, isn't nature beautiful? No, it probably has consequences. We certainly know with the bees that it does. We've lost almost all of our bees in America because of our widespread use of pesticides. That is gonna make it difficult for other uh, plants to pollinate and spread. It has an impact, obviously, on farming. All of these things add up. And at the end of the day, can we really say that the path that we're treading right now when it comes to our environment, when it comes to our approach to animals and plants, that it's sustainable, that this is not gonna have a long-term effect, not on the little things like the butterflies, but on us as well? I can't tell you that. And when I see something like this, when I see a story that we've lost all these monarch butterflies, I think this is the exact sort of story that nobody is gonna care about. It's gonna seem so small, so petty, so specific. It's California, it's monarch butterflies. But it's not just that, it's the context that they live in. And that context is an environment that is becoming inhospitable to more and more species on a yearly basis. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. 
If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.